that's still part of the Russian festival. But right now, I don't have a Russian next to me, I don't no. think. <laughs> but he may be rushing to get out of here eventually. <laughs> I'm not sure. I do want the session to end. I, I, I heard the pie story. So oh, I, you did? Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I, I try to build it. Well, we won't talk about that. No. Good. But we will talk about storytelling, and we'll talk about an open mic, and Sandy uh, Schumann is with you. Right. Sandy Schumann and I are members of the Story Circle of the Capital District, which is a resident company of storytellers here at our beloved Proctor's Theater. And we do programs here at Proctor's and around the community, and we're really here to talk about some of our community development work. Uh, we're storytellers. We like to promote storytelling as an art form, as a way of entertaining and teaching. And uh, so we've, you know, we've got things going on at the Glen Sanders Mansion with Story Sunday and here. Um, and well received. People we have really a, enjoy We them. have a good time. And really to get the word out about storytelling, we've launched a couple of other initiatives that uh, are, we think are fun, kind of fun. And, and we did not have an open mic, an opportunity for kind of people to come in and tell stories here in Schenectady. So we've started something we call First Tuesdays at Arthur's Market in Schenectady. And Richard Genest is very generous, isn't and he? He is generous, and the, the setting is just ideal. It's like telling stories in your parlor. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we run from 7 to 9, the first Tuesday of every month. We have a featured teller. This month coming up on the 3rd uh, is Nancy Marie Payne. And her theme is stories from someone who has kissed the Blarney Stone. <laughs> and, uh, and oh, the, oh, Leo's raising Leo's his right hand. There. And There's a few me. of us around, actually, but <laughs> but she's taken the prize in March. Uh, and Nancy has worked at the Five Rivers uh, Educational Center and things, and it's just a fascinating storyteller. Um, so she'll be on for about 25 minutes in the middle of the 7 to 9 p.m. period, and then around that, people who want to tell a story, sing a song play the guitar. Oh, you're uh, just kind of doing an open mic. We are mic. doing it. It's spoken word and music. And okay, we've had cool. a wonderful variety. We have a nucleus of storytellers. We have a group of folks who study the classical guitar, and they show up. There are several poets in the stockade. And what does Sandy do? Well, Sandy has been the featured teller there. You're the featured I teller? I have, okay. yeah. Sandy has been the featured teller there, and really featuring uh, his his one of the stories in the book. and. I'll, I'll let Sandy tell about the book because it came out of a, a, an issue of getting the word out about storytelling. Mr. Schumann. Yes, yes, thank well, you. Well, we ought to start Stories by to giving tell. you a copy for your very own. Oh, very this is much. your own copy. My and own copy. We will, we will Stories we tell. We will autograph it after the show. Thank you, please do. And oh my goodness, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty. Almost as many storytellers as the number pi. <laughs> Yes. Oh. <laughs> 20, 20 storytellers. 30. I'm going to have to come in with a story about pie. You are. I'm going to work one up for you. I'll let you know. <laughs> Next time. Uh, there's 31 stories in this book. Uh, there are personal stories, historical stories, uh, folklore, fantasy. It's a broad range of stories. Um, and, you know, you ought to give one. Uh, 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 Joe's, oh. Joe's stories in the book are of a personal nature. Um, and uh, your cue is on. Well, I, my cue is on. My, okay. My, the marketer in me tells me that you can buy the book at the Open Door Bookstore if you'd like to, or at the New York State Folklore Society for fourteen ninety five. Okay. Uh, but I'm pleased to tell you this story. Um, I grew up in Schenectady in a big old rambling house right on the tenth tee of the old Stanford Golf Course, and my father's name was Alden, just like my real name is Alden, and this story is about the only time I've called him by his first name. When I was about 11, I was a, a voracious reader. I would read everything in sight. I would love to go to restaurants just to read the menus. You know, it was just that kind of thing. And um, the ritual in my family is I get a little bit of ration TV and then I get sent to bed. But I could read until my mother came up about 9 o'clock. And then I turn the light off. And then if the story was really good, i turn it back on. <laughs> now, our house creaked, so you could tell when people were moving around in it, and I could tell when my father was coming to bed about 11 because the stairs would creak. And I'd turn the light off, and if the book was really good, I'd turn it back on after I heard the toilet flush and those other things. So one night, I was engrossed in something, and it must have been Captain Horatio Hornblower, one of those adventure Great stories. <laughs> and I missed the creak on the stairs, and I heard him at the top of the stairs, and I turned the light off. 
and then I heard him come down my hall. And he usually kind of gave me an admonishment, you know, turn out the light, something. But this time he opened the door and he whispered, Alden, Alden, if you're awake, join me at the top of the stairs. Oh, I know you're awake, I heard the light click. So I get up and it's January and it's cold and I open the door and the whole hall is full of neon, green. And I look out that north window over the 10th fairway and right there are the Aurora Borealis. Oh, oh my goodness. Shooting up, going like crazy. And I just walked to the window and I stood right there next to my dad and I go, and he went, and we didn't say anything. There was a precious silence until I heard him say, Alden, Alden, this is truly fantastic, but you know, I've got to go to work and you've got to go to school, so good night, Alden. And I looked up at him and I said, well, good night, Alden. And I turned around and I went back in those cold, cold sheets, but I wasn't cold. I was just warmed up by the connection with my pop. And over the years, I've been fortunate enough to see the Aurora three other times. And each time I hear in my ear, whisper, Good night, Alden. What a beautiful story. Well, there's 30 stories that come yeah. from places like that in your mind. So if mindset. someone has a story similar to that, Sandy, would you suggest that they come on the first Tuesday and tell their story and hope that somebody goes, oh, that was wonderful. Amen. That's yeah. what it's all about. Yeah. Uh, the, the book, of course, is, has the written version of, of Joe's story, which is, you know, the enduring connection between father and son. Uh, you know, um, we have a story by Margaret French about her experience as a young teacher teaching English literature in a maximum security <laughs> prison. Oh, my God. Uh, That's got to be a story. Uh, there's a historical story that, that Bonnie Mayon wrote about her great-grandfather, one of the early biblical archaeologists, with his three graduate students on a trip in 1905 to the Dead Sea. They're all in these books? Yeah. I'm going to have to he read gets, it from cover to cover. He gets kidnapped. Yeah, almost. I'm going right. to read it from cover kidnapped to cover. Kidnapped by, by Bedouins. This yeah. is going to be, and I'll be sure to turn the light out if well, somebody walks by the door. The, the other, <laughs> one of my favorite stories is from my dear friend Kent Bushman, who uh, has been on the show and is this well-known, he leads Camp Fowler in the Adirondacks. But he got involved in the Schoharry Rebuild. And uh, his story is called The Lost Tools and of Schoharry. And that's in there. And that's a great story that uh, echoes a story that was in the New York Times as well. Uh, just a great, great bit of, of uh, regional history. And so it's important if you want to hear more stories to go to the open on mic and to get the book maybe and learn a little bit more about it. We're right. almost out of time, but I want to encourage people to go. Please come and, and, and join and in. You don't have to tell a story, but we love to listen if you do. Good. So there you go. Thanks. Thanks. Sandy for being with us. Nice to meet you as well. And, and if uh, you want to learn about storytelling more, we have a speaker's bureau now. One of us will come Wonderful. out and talk with your Come back group. on again sometime. Great. Will right, do. Right.